<laughs> I've started collecting bloopers for like our final bonus episode of the year. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to end up in there. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> our opening quote's going to be. <laughs> in three, two, one. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hole. With Third Person Limited, we want to ensure that the characters... <laughs> right. <laughs> that part. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, let's start this one over. Extra adjectives in three, two... Why is it extra adjectives slash adjectives? I meant for it to be adjectives and adverbs, but okay. when I saw that it was adjectives and adjectives, it was funny to me. <laughs> Episode title, nobody cares. Nice. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Uh, that's one addition for our bloopers. <laughs> Extra adjectives and adjectives in three, two, one. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Lee Esses. Today's episode is going to be a lot of fun, I hope, for you. It is fun for us. As you may have guessed by our chaotic opener, today's episode is going to be our first ever bloopers reel. And it is covering stuff from pretty much all of 2023, since this is our final episode for the year. And a lot of people seem to be really enjoying some of our behind the scenes episodes, like our bonus episode last month, because that was our blackmail episode. Today we're going back through the year and looking at some of the goofier moments we've had behind the scenes that get cut out. Because this is a post-produced podcast, we end up coming across a lot more serious in the final draft of the episode versus the raw, unedited version of the episode. So now you get all of those table scraps. We have had so much fun recording the podcast in the last, what, four and a half years or yeah. so? And we are growing so much. We are so excited to have more and more listeners every year with every new event that we go to. We are so thrilled. And this, for us, is an opportunity to just show you our little more humorous side, our weirder side, because you do just get that very polished outcome most of the time from us. So if you're just listening to Writing Roots for the first time and you're expecting some grand philosophical revelations, check out our next episode <laughs> or our last episode. Not this one, because we're mostly just waiting for dogs to finish farting and that kind of thing. Ah, uh, my dogs. <laughs> We don't do a lot of this. Like we said, this is our very first blooper reel. We don't do a lot of behind the scenes stuff because in general, we like to focus on the writing. We like to focus on helping you with your writing. So to kind of give you an idea about what to expect this episode, we giggle a lot. Yes. I will try to make sure they aren't inordinately loud compared to the text that we're communicating. But I do want to point out that as writers, it's so easy to hold yourself to a really critical standard and to become deflated because of that standard. One of the things that I think has really helped me as just a person is releasing two episodes, maybe three episodes a week for the four and a half years that we've been on the air. Because this forces me to get over the perfectionism and just keep producing. And we encourage you to do the same. When we have this opportunity to let go of the perfectionism, to laugh at ourselves, it helps us become better. And by showing you this, by last month, our bonus episode being, here's our trash writing, these are all ways to show you that you can be a real person. What you see in the public appearances of your favorite authors that's a very scripted, composed version of them. It's not necessarily who they are. So we're giving you that little peek behind the curtains because what you will hear in this episode is a fraction of the bloopers that we run into every single week. I've had someone suggest that we put the bloopers of every episode after the outro <laughs> just so we can giggle about that. 
that does weird things to our numbers as far as listenership, so we decided to compile it all into this bonus episode instead. Now, just so it's super clear, because we can't, like, give the little clicker thing that they do in the Supernatural blooper reels, because we're an audio thing only, we're going to have this sound to indicate a transition to a different episode or a different moment in the episode, because there's a lot of giggling, especially breathlessly, which doesn't always come across on the air, but we want to make sure things are clear when topic hopping, because again, this is covering the hundred plus episodes since the beginning of 2023. So, enjoy. Thank you, Caddy. really hope that makes it. Through an arbitrary problem, I had arrived at a tenet of good writing. Brevity wins. Michael Winter. But I struggle with brevity. I know you do. Guess what? I'm your editor. (laughs) Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee. If you are offering the opinions of more than one character, especially outside of dialogue, but no, not especially, just outside of dialogue, because if they're talking, they're talking. That's that's the thing that happens. (laughs) Just as anything is a problem if it's redundant, except for safety measures. Safety measures should be redundant. Redundancy has its place in systems, not in writing. Another thing to keep an eye out for someone else's fear can be minimized in a humorous or very casual way they can get the willies or oh i just had a fright there can be a lot of hand wringing involved or they get the heebie-jeebies they're making a fuss why on earth is sweat blood there it was listed as a synonym (laughs) um (laughs) Uh, It was one I wasn't familiar with, but you have a different American cultural background than I did. So if you said it, then I was going to leave it. If you didn't, I wasn't going to talk (laughs) about it. I have no idea what that means. But it's horrifying. (laughs) It absolutely is. It is a character in the scene, even though it can't walk up to Sam and go, Hey, why don't you put me on your finger? I did finger guns during that. (laughs) It was beautiful. But the the ring... It, Chucky, Sixth Sense. (laughs) I was reading those by the time I was that age. I was terrorized as a child. (laughs) It's a lot of fun. That's the only reason why I would be remotely interested in being a parent is to traumatize a child. (laughs) (laughs) That's going in the deleted episode. (laughs) Before the Republic finally takes over again. I don't know. I get so confused. There's like the rebellion. There's like the resistance. There's, I don't know. It's a lot in the Star Wars universe now. Drink your coffee. (laughs) I don't drink coffee. That's probably part of the problem. (laughs) I think in modern film, this is even changing it. Why can't I word today? It generally takes you about half an episode to get into it, so. (laughs) This is something I... Ugh, why are words not working? Brain. Reboot. Percussive maintenance on my brain. (laughs) Slightly different other universe and stole his son. Spoiler. It's like 20 years old at this point. You can suck it up. (laughs) Stole his son. You also look at something like the Scooby-Doo gang, where you have kind of the main character scooby-doo i mean it is named after him but then the rest of the gang are sorry scooby gang you actually mean buffy the vampire slayer don't you that was what i was thinking when i wrote it down i yep registered that halfway through (laughs) let me start that over (laughs) you have the scooby gang in the buffy the vampire this is going to be a murder mystery this is the problem dead body solution find the murderer what did I say? Uncle Owen and Aunt Baru's barbecue. <laughs> you kind of have the minions, the orange banana guys. Orange? They are very yellow. yellow. I, I said yellow in my head. <laughs> you kind of... 
that the people are happier, that the damsel has been rescued for good and she's not going to get captured. (laughs) I have the same reaction. (laughs) That the damsel has been captured for good and she's not going to get kidnapped again. Damsel's been captured for good? Oh, yeah. She's been captured for good. But I mean, fine. (laughs) If she's a damsel keeper there, I'm not rescuing anyone. (laughs) The damsel has been rescued for good and she's not going to get captured anymore. Things like holidays and what specific, what specific, this is why I wish Black Rose was open before seven. (laughs) What specific historical event triggered this holiday in a way that makes more sense. So that is in my style guide as well. Not style guide. Thank you. (laughs) We're going to have an entire bloopers episode of us saying style guide instead of cheat sheet. (laughs) So that is in my cheat sheet as well. The editor cheat... (sighs) This is going to be a rough episode for me. The editor cheat sheets... It can be them trying to make a philosophical... (laughs) (sighs) (laughs) It could be them trying to make some sort of philosophical point... This is when you'll need to establish that the manuscript needs to be in something similar to the manuscript formumat. Formumat? Where did that word come from? (laughs) It's going to be a warning. This is where you establish that the manuscript needs to be in some kind of manuscript format. But for you, strangely enough, that's not an issue. Yes, I'm deleting this, but it's funny to me. Because you will breathe in the middle of a thought, and then I'll take that out, and it sounds like you've gone two and a half minutes without breathing because you don't actually, like, pause on the punctuation. All of your breaths are in the middle of a thought. (laughs) I just breathe whenever I want to. (laughs) But, like, thought process and the way I'm, like, I edit the podcast, all of that comes out, and it's like, Okay, well, Lee doesn't breathe. (laughs) That you can still find what you changed. Those relevant pieces of relevant. (laughs) Those relevant. Those relevant pieces of story from early. You really do roll with disadvantage on all your luck rolls, don't you? I do. (laughs) I am a very fortunate human being. I have a lot of people in my corner that I really appreciate. But there's a reason why I'm a DM and not a player. (laughs) It helps to be pretty thick-skinned if you're going to enter (laughs) content. From the very beginning, it can... From the... the, 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 (laughs) From the very beginning of your writing process. And they'll have some maybe some crossover or they'll in have (laughs) or it will be and there are open anthologies and (laughs) i feel like half of our blooper episode at the end of the year is going to be just us going good why can't i get words (laughs) now there are open anthologies Omen and Ominous are connected. Yes. <laughs> I hadn't made that until <laughs> just now. Because, like, I, I was initially going to call this one Omens, but it's a little more complex than that, so yeah. I didn't. It's like, wait. <laughs> Omen, <laughs> Ominous. Anyway. What? I just realized how my story needs to end. Write it down. <laughs> Nano is coming. Write it down. Oh, people are going to be so mad. If I keep my opening the way it is. With him hunting her down? I don't know, with specifically the first line of, of it. She needs to die. Yes. Kill them all. <laughs> you just sounded very Gaston in that moment. <laughs> It's always been a tragedy that he doesn't have a good song. Kill the Beast isn't? Yeah, it's it's like 45 seconds long. Okay. 
How many YouTubers do you know have their acapella group singing Kill the Beast? None. Zero. They're all singing Hellfire, which is great. It's a beautiful song. Yes. <laughs> I, just, I just love that when I said that. It was just like, oh, crap. <laughs> light bulb. Not the kind of light bulb I wanted. Anyway. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Leeses, and I'm stepping on my. Did we say cord? that last time? What? Welcome to Writing Roots. Yeah, we say it enough that I can cut and paste if it's not there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I believe so. I think we just got right into it. We didn't really take the breath, so I couldn't read where that break was. But yeah, I think it was in there. Okay. Today we're talking about one of the i think most delicate ways that you can introduce foreshadowing into your work is through prophecies or flashes forward flash forwards flashing forward <laughs> in your book in your here is why i'm afraid of the color blue or whatever this is a... go away Oh, they're so cool. In this structure especially, it's important to... In a case of a tragedy, Romeo and Juliet, they just die. Which is for the best, because then saves them 50 years of bickering. Says the pessimist. <laughs> Realist. This does not mean that... I Welcome to Writing Roots, I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Lee S's. This episode is one I can learn from. <laughs> And uh, send us a... <clears throat> <coughs> Don't come for us. <laughs> Leave us fantasy authors alone. We are doing better than Tolkien. All puppies are cute, unless they're, I don't know, chihuahuas. I don't know if chihuahua puppies are cute. I don't, they're, those are rats. Right. Okay. Dire rats evolve into chihuahuas. <laughs> this is our blooper episode generator. <laughs> I think we've stretched it enough. Yeah. Did you want to go next episode we're talking about? That's just, yeah. a, that, that tends to be a good, I can delete this. Yeah. <laughs> we're a little light on this one, so <laughs> feel free to keep rambling. Keep it simple and... Right, selfishly? Yeah. Thank you again for listening. If you stuck around through all of our bloopers... We hope you enjoyed it. I know we have had so much fun recording and making these bloopers and, of course, making the educational episodes that we've offered to you throughout the whole year. I hope you can see how much fun you can have in every creative project that you pursue, which can only happen if you write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing.